Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. So in this video, I want to talk about something slightly different today, which is a review and a chat of my favourite daytime TV show growing up, Sunset Beach. For those of you that haven't seen Sunset Beach, it was a ridiculously over-the-top, very dramatic soap opera set in California, America, and it was just so pioneering for its time. It was very uniquely communicating very dramatic, very over-the-top storylines with a phenomenal kind of character base. Those, those characters on, on Sunset Beach are just so unique, so unforgettable, and so brilliantly portrayed by the actors that they had communicating those different storylines. And I really, really, really feel like it's time for Sunset Beach to be rebooted. This is the right time to do it. Everything that was a classic TV show back in the day has been rebooted and I honestly feel like it's time someone reboots Sunset Beach. Please can someone just reboot Sunset Beach? I genuinely feel like it needs to come to a brand new audience and to a new age and it's, it's really timeless as well actually. And I also genuinely feel that a lot of movies and TV shows since Sunset Beach have actually taken a lot of inspiration, I honestly feel, from kind of the catalogue of different storylines that Sunset Beach has you know, shown in its time, which I will talk about in a minute in this video, but yeah, I honestly do feel like a lot of movies do do kind of look back, and TV shows, at how, you know, Sunset Beach went about its dramatic storytelling and the different storylines that it had and the different, you know, threads of different narrative styles that they had. And I really do feel like it kind of set the benchmark for, for like, very compelling viewing. But in this video, I'm going to talk about my five favourite Sunset Beach storylines. I mean, they were all great. Um, but yeah, just, just in terms of doing a compact video, I just want to talk about my five favourite storylines. So in at number five is Who Shot Francesca Vargas. So before all the classic whodunits such as Who Shot Phil Mitchell and Who Shot Archie Mitchell in the EastEnders and Who Shot Mr Burns in The Simpsons, there was Who Shot Francesca Vargas in Sunset Beach. So Francesca Vargas was a character that was beginning to kind of wind all of the residents of Sunset Beach up by kind of getting in their business, by kind of breaking different couples up and kind of just knowing things about them that she was going to tell people that they don't want to have revealed their different secrets. So she was really, you know, really annoying everyone. And the storyline in terms of, you know, building up to that point was beautifully culminated in terms of all the different characters have their reasons for kind of wanting Francesca Vargas out of the picture and then funnels down to someone just having enough and kind of shooting her basically. And then the kind of then the storyline took loads of different twists and turns in terms of finding out who done it, why did they do it, it kind of kept the audience really guessing. And it was really, really compelling viewing actually. And you know, me and my family and friends would always kind of guess, oh was it maybe this person, was it this person? And you know, you always think different things based on you know how the storyline is being communicated and then it's all revealed, um, which was just a fantastic reveal. And there was a really dramatic scene actually where kind of all the characters are lined up and Francesca kind of after being shot, she pops out of a cake and points at someone and says, Oh, it was you, and then kind of just falls, um, falls to her death. But it was just a, just a brilliantly told storyline and I mean it was a real shame that Francesca Vargas was killed off because she was actually such a great character but that storyline was, um, was just very very compelling and actually talking about EastEnders I also I honestly feel like the Who Shot Lucy Beale storyline which was very pioneering for EastEnders did take like bits and pieces from the Who Shot Francesca Vargas storyline of Sunset Beach, so it definitely was something that was a roadmap of how to do it. In at number four is the Baby Trey storyline. So those of you that haven't watched Sunset Beach before, you're going to have to listen very closely because this is going to sound very, very complicated. But okay, so there's two characters called Gregory and Olivia, and they're kind of like the powerful dynasty type couple, they're very rich, very powerful, very successful, very high status. And they have two kids, Caitlin and Sean. One day Caitlin gets a new boyfriend called Cole, <clears throat> who was previously dating Francesca from number five, but that's a, that's a whole different storyline. At the same time, 
Gregory and Olivia are kind of having different marriage issues and for whatever reason Olivia decides to sleep with Cole not knowing that actually this is her daughter's boyfriend so that's a whole little complicated little web. Simultaneously Caitlin and Olivia both get pregnant and you don't know who the daddy is for Olivia so they're both being pregnant ladies and one day very tragically Caitlin loses her and Cole's baby but she doesn't want to tell Cole that she's lost her baby instead she wants to try and continue to be pregnant and try to find another child so that her relationship doesn't kind of disintegrate because she's beginning to get married to Cole so she enlists the help of Annie Douglas Annie has a whole different vendetta for wanting to split up Gregory and Olivia because in Annie, <laughs> this is going to sound very complicated in Annie's dad's will he wrote that if Annie marries Gregory before a certain time and date then she will get access to his estate because he was also very rich so she has her own agenda in terms of wanting to split Gregory and Olivia up so she kind of sees this as an opportunity to to split them up because she is going to trap and kidnap Olivia and uh, drug her into getting like temporary amnesia kidnap her baby and then give that baby to Caitlin, not telling her that it's actually her mum's son and then thinking that that's going to be so badly taken by Gregory that Olivia was able to, was, wasn't able to keep their child that he's then going to leave her which does end up happening and then that's Annie's card to get with Gregory and then Olivia later remembers that she is the mother of Trey and then that just gets really complicated because Caitlin's bringing up Trey as her own son Meanwhile, Annie gets gets together with Gregory and Olivia remembers what Annie did and it's just a really <laughs> complicated web is the only way to describe it. But it was really, really compelling viewing and all of the characters just, all the actors just communicated and played their characters so well and so believably that you kind of just found it just really, really gripping the whole time. So in a number four is the Baby Trey storyline. In at number three is Shockwave. So a lot of TV shows and movies have now done this storyline, but I still <laughs> firmly believe that Sunset Beach was the, was the pioneering one that kind of started this storyline and now other people have copied it. But anyway, Shockwave was a storyline where an earthquake, two earthquakes actually, hit Sunset Beach and kind of, you know, tore the set pieces apart and kind of put these characters in very crazy situations. And it was really cleverly done actually because a lot of the characters that didn't like each other were, were stuck together and trapped. Um, Annie and Olivia being, being an example. And, and it was really cleverly done because obviously this whole, this whole shockwave situation is very dramatic and very scary. And it's like, how, what are the different characters going to do? Are they going to support each other and get out as a team? Are they going to be selfish and do their own thing? What are they going to be talking about while they're stuck together? So that was all very, very compelling. And that's kind of what's happening on land. At the same time, simultaneously, the rest of the cast and characters are on a luxury cruise, Titanic style, um, out at sea, and Shockwave, the earthquake, um, impacts them as well, and then their ship capsizes in typical <laughs> Titanic dramatic Sunset Beach style, and then that's a whole different storyline about, you know, are these characters going to help each other to get out of this, like, situation are they going to let, let the character that they don't like drown are they what are they going to be selfish and it was very very compelling it very felt like you're watching a movie while the whole shockwave scenario was happening and then you know when the residents of the land hear what's happening at sea you know the emotions that are felt there and then kind of as they see different characters surviving and coming back and some certain characters not coming back and kind of like the impact of that and it was the thing I think at the time that made Shockwave so epic was that nothing had been done like that before and even if it had been done like that before because you've been so invested in these characters for such a long time throughout the, the month leading up to this you're really 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 feeling kind of the emotions and the impact within these characters and I feel like that was just so brilliantly done that you know Shockwave has to get a place in my top five. In at number two is Derek and Terror Island. So before Terror Island happened, the Scream movie was released, which was just another cult classic, which was, you know, a phenomenally told movie in terms of like, 
you know, who is this, who's the killer, who's behind the mask, and kind of really compelling, intense situations that Wes Craven kind of created. We'll review Scream another day, but Sunset Beach took inspiration from the Scream movie franchise and kind of did their own version of it. So some of the characters and residents of Sunset Beach are going to Ben's Island retreat uh, for like a fun weekend, so they think. And suddenly someone on board is has a mask and is kind of killing people. They brought on a load of different um, extra characters, I guess. Um, it turns out they were slowly killing off so that they had people for this whole Terror Island experience. But then one of the main characters died, which was really, really sad. And yeah, just that whole reveal and just like the, the way in which the Scream movie like aspect and elements were communicated and told through the Sunset Beach like prism was just was just yeah phenomenally you know entertaining um very compelling and yeah it was just really really um great storyline and then the whole you know evil twin brother aspect of this storyline just really took a whole life of its own and was again just something that hadn't been done before and now you know nowadays a lot of a lot of different tv shows and movies have done like oh there's like an evil you know um sister or brother or something like that but sunset beach like i said at the time it was it was the first time that anything like that had ever been seen before so yeah the whole evil twin brother derek storyline and terror island just collectively was just brilliantly told and Clive Robertson who was the actor behind Ben and Derek just did such a good job in, um, in bringing those two characters to life and kind of showing the good and evil side of um, a twin brother relationship so yeah in at number two is Derek and Terror Island. So before I reveal my number one favourite storyline in Sunset Beach I just wanted to give a shout out to a couple of other epic storylines such as Gabby falling in love with two brothers, Virginia trying to split up Vanessa and Michael in any way shape she can, such as impregnating her with somebody else's sperm, with making Vanessa think that she has a deadly disease, and just loads of other crazy, crazy attempts. The other great storylines are Gregory impersonating his uncle, and you know, the cursed jewels, the cursed Rosario jewels, which is making everyone who touches it fall really old or have different incarnations of characters that they're in relationship with are trying to kill them and just those are crazy 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 storyline. And my number one favourite storyline of Sunset Beach has got to be the Ben, Meg and Maria love triangle. This storyline was honestly just beyond epic. It was just excellent, outstanding, phenomenal, everything. Even though Sunset Beach hasn't been on for so many decades, Still to this day, I find it just like so brilliantly, like the storylines and everything were just written, acted, everything just so well. For those of you that haven't seen it, let me just give you a little quick recap of what happened. So Ben and Meg are kind of like the, the couple that you've been rooting for since the start of the show. So they're kind of like the equivalent of Ross and Rachel from Friends. So Meg was supposed to get married to a guy called Tim in Kansas and on her wedding day she realises that Tim's cheating on her and getting with some other girl so she has a pen pal in California who's Ben and on her wedding day she decides to do something crazy and just run away to go to California to try to find the love of her life um, and throughout the show these two characters are you know they're in love with each other but they're put in loads of challenging situations such as Annie the schema behind the whole baby trade situation um, is wanting Ben for herself in the beginning, um, so she kind of is a rival to Meg, and then also Tim follows Meg from Kansas and tries to win her back all the time. But then the whole Derek situation happens that I mentioned a minute ago. So they're just constantly just, you know, in situations where they want to be together but their, their love is very challenged basically. And then also all of the shockwave earthquakes that happen. So basically like they're just going through this journey and it, it, it ultimately culminates at a point where it's on their wedding day so they've, they've reached their wedding day and Meg makes friends, best friends, with a girl called Dana in hospital that she becomes really, really close to and Dana doesn't know who she is, she's got amnesia, she doesn't know why she's in Sunset Beach, she doesn't know how she got there, she doesn't know anything about her past um, and Meg makes really good friends with her um, and invites her to her and Ben's wedding and then Meg invites 
her friend Dana to her and Ben's wedding. And there are loads of different situations where Dana's trying to get into the wedding, but um, for whatever reason she just doesn't enter the, the chapel because either her shoe breaks or um, she's just not feeling well or she gets lost and loads of different things happen. And then eventually when Meg, <laughs> very dramatic, when Meg decides to throw her bouquet, in walks Dana, her friend with amnesia, um, to catch the bouquet. And then all of the residents are kind of looking in shock at who this person is that's just walked in. And then it's revealed that actually the um, girl that Meg was becoming best friends with was actually Ben's ex-wife that everyone thought had died, who's called Maria. And then it's a whole brand new shocking revelation that first Maria's alive, secondly that Meg was best friends with, with the girl that was actually her husband's ex-wife that everyone thought had died and then she just comes back and then it's like a really interesting situation in terms of you know someone that someone that you thought was your best friend is now actually your husband's ex-wife that's come back from the dead kind of thing um, and that whole situation who can't who doesn't even know who she is so that whole just situation and it was just really really clever in terms of how slowly you know Maria's getting her memory back and then she kind of wants Ben for herself and you know then what does Ben do and then then that situation is just at the point where it's going to get resolved um, in terms of Ben and Meg are finally properly getting married and M Maria agreeing to um, divorce Ben and then just allow Ben and Meg to be a couple and then that whole situation is kind of thrown out of the water by a new lady called Tess who, who's got a child that she claims is Maria and Ben's son and then what does that mean to the whole situation and then this new son Benji doesn't like Meg and then there's an abduction storyline where Benji's almost kidnapped and Meg's to blame and it just gets very very complicated and then Derek comes back and it's just, you know, it's, uh, it's um, very very interesting and compelling viewing. And for that reason, the Ben, Meg and Maria triangle just has to get my number one spot in terms of my favourite storyline on Sunset Beach. And there you have it. Thank you very much everyone for watching my top five storylines of Sunset Beach. Like I said in the beginning, I really do want to make a massive plea to whoever the powers that be that can make this show rebooted and come back in a new form. Please do it because I honestly feel like Sunset Beach was just such a phenomenon that it needs to be watched and celebrated and brought to a brand new audience in a brand new way. So if anyone can reboot it, then, uh, then please do. Um, otherwise, I'd highly recommend anyone to check out the different clips on YouTube because it is such a really pivotal, monumental TV show. And I'd, I'd also love to hear what you guys think about Sunset Beach. So please come back after you watch some clips and let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'll try and reply to all the different comments that I can. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.